case that can arise and pattern, if we recognize it, is called a difference of squares. So here we have the same terms in each bracket, x and 6. One is positive, one is negative. If we were to go forward, expand x times x, it's x squared, x times negative 6, it's negative 6x, 6 times x is plus 6x, 6 times negative 6, negative 36. As we continue to collect like terms, we notice that our x terms cancel out. Negative 6x plus 6x is 0x's. I'm going to put that in a different color just so that we remember that we don't actually need to show it. It's not there. Again, same terms in our binomial times our binomial, different signs, x times x, x squared, x times 5, 5x, negative 5 times x, negative 5x, negative 5 times positive 5, negative 25. 5x take away. 5x and 0x's. Again, we don't have to show that. So we can go right to the end. Now we start to notice a pattern. If we recognize, what do you notice about the two brackets in the original question? They have the same terms. but different signs. And by different, we mean opposite. So what does that tell us? If we think of a pattern, the F from FOIL still stays. There it is. And the L from FOIL still stays. There it is. The O and the I cancel each other out. So if we see a pattern where we have one term plus another term and then those exact same terms except take away, we can go right to the A term squared minus the B term squared. Again, we would have a positive AB term and a negative AB term, which would equal zero. So it's not there, it's gone. So let's see, in our example, X is both in the A position or the first position. So we take that term, we square it, X squared. It's gonna always be a negative because a positive times a negative is a negative. The same term, 5, 5 squared is 25. That's always going to be a negative, and there's a negative. So we can recognize that, and we should be able to go both ways. So it held true going forward for expand and simplify. So the opposite factoring would also be true. So if we ever saw x squared minus 25, what we're looking for is, first step, is there a common factor that we can pull out? If there isn't, our next step, is the middle sign or the second term a negative? It is. Can we take the square root of the first term? Can we take the square root of the second term? If we can, then it satisfies our needs. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 25 is 5, so they go in the brackets. One with a negative, one with a positive. So let's see some examples and see if we can put this together. So the first step, two terms, is there a common factor? No. If there's no common factor, I now look and say, 
Can I take the square root of the first term? Yes, that's x. Can I take the square root of the second term? Square root of 100? Yes, that's 10. Is that middle term or that middle sign a negative? Yep. Because of that, I can automatically factor this into x and 10 in each bracket and one term will be positive and one term will be negative. So again, we look, can I take the square root of x squared? Yes, it's x. We always need an exponent to be able to take the square root, divide by two, we need it to be even. It is even. Negative, yep, square root of 25 is five. So each bracket is gonna have x and five. One will be plus five and one will be minus five. As we go through the examples, let's see if they follow the same pattern. Now the whole idea in recognizing this is that we can bypass decomposition because we could always treat this as a trinomial with zero x term and say two numbers that multiply to four times negative one, which is negative four, and add to zero. They multiply to a negative, we're gonna have a negative and a positive. They add to zero, they're gonna be the same number. Instead of doing that, instead of doing that, we can recognize the pattern. Can I take the square root of 4x squared? Square root of 4 is 2, square root of x squared. 2x. There's a negative. Can I take the square root of 1? It's 1. So I have 2x plus 1 in one bracket, 2x minus 1 in another bracket. Decomposition, but if I recognize the special pattern, I can go right to the end. So let's see a few more examples. Square root of 9x squared. Yes, I can do that. 3x. There's a negative. Sweet. Can I take the square root of 64? Yes, that's 8. It follows all the stipulations I need. So 3x and 8 plus in one bracket and 3x minus 8 in the other bracket. Done. If there's a y squared and an x squared, that's fine. I can still look at the square root. The square root of 9x squared is 3x. The square root of 4y squared is 2y. There's a negative in between. It follows my pattern. So I have 3x plus 2y and 3x minus 2y. One last example, a challenge. Same thing. I'm going to color coordinate this one just so that we can see eventually. Can I take the square root of 16 for x exponent 4? Again, square root of 16 is going to be 4. x exponent 4, the square root, or divided by 2, is x exponent 2. There's a negative, so it follows that pattern. And can I take the square root of 1? It's 1. So that means I'm going to have 4x squared plus 1 in brackets and 4x squared minus 1 in brackets. Now the challenge is, I need to look, can I factor fully? Can I continue? So can I take the square root of 4x squared? Yes. 2x. Can I take the square root of 1? Yes. It's 1. But now in between I have a positive sign. So I cannot 
factor that bracket any further. This bracket has a negative sign, which now follows all my stipulations. So I can take the square root of 4x squared, and that's 2x. I can take the square root of 1, and that's 1. And that negative follows the stipulation that this second bracket is going to break down and factor into 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. Can't take the square root. It doesn't follow any more pattern. There is not any common factor, so I'm done with this one. This bracket does not break down further. That first bracket still exists. I still need to remember that it is still part of the entire thing and it stays there. And so now I've gone and factored fully.